I'll be watching here in a little bit. All right, we're live, Cub. Good morning. Good morning. Yay. I, I have just started. I'm excited for this one. You have a much nicer smile than you did last week. I know, right? Last week you were a little down in the dumps, it looked like. Yeah. 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 So, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Bear Cave. For the 6,000 people that are not watch, are watching, I hope your coffee is hot and your feet are warm because it's a little chilly out. It feels great. It's a little wet. Yeah. Cub could see her breath when she opened the garage door. <laughs> yeah. That either means it's cold or she hasn't brushed her teeth. Well, probably both. <laughs> she went and got socks on. So. I had to get my, my socks. Yep. So, okay. Good morning, Rusty. Good morning there, sir. Morning, Cub. So, this morning, I, I'm excited for this one. Good morning, Tom. So, three weeks ago, well, three weeks to the day, um, I was watching, you know, I watch uh, uh, our church service online. Does this propane tank have gas? Yes, it needs hooked up because I used it yesterday. Okay. Um, so I was watching the service online and they were talking about, um, the book of Genesis 25, I was like 27 through 34, where they're talking about, uh, Esau, uh, quick check in guys and in India. Ooh, good morning, Dutchie. Grab some curry for us. He just, I just watched he made curry on his Hellraiser uh, setup. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I just watched that this morning, buddy. I love me some good curry. We'll have to do that one day. We'll have to make curry. Let's do that. Um, so, anyway, I was watching, uh, so they were talking about that, talking about Esau. and. Uh, no, you should be all right. Okay. Talking about Jacob and Esau, where Esau went out and went out hunting and he came back and Jacob had this stew and he was like, he was so famished that he gave up his birthright to eat the stew. Just kind of blew up. Yeah. So I asked myself, I said, self, did you answer yourself? I did. I said, self, what could be in this stew that would be that, that, that great that he would have to give up his birthright and it was worthy enough to put in to a book 800 years after the fact well i, I take it back i take it back what would be important enough to put into a book that's going to be read for ages you know for eternity so anyway i, I got to looking and got to looking and got to looking I found this lady, Tori Avery. She had wrote a little uh, uh, blog thing or whatever, and she put up a recipe. Things pretty close to uh, the the ingredients that they would have had at that time, and um, you lost your train of thought. Yeah, I, I, I flatlined. <laughs> Um, what kind of ingredients they would have had and not only w what was available to the Middle East at that point in time, but also what they, the, the social class that they were in would have had. So I was like, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Now, this other fellow I read, he had a story that he thinks that Esau was, had the flu or was sick when he went to when he went out hunting good morning charlie how you doing my friend hi charlie so they the the that guy's story Is was he that he had uh, yeah. he had the flu when he left and went out hunting 
and because of that, the the reason why he thinks that is because all the stuff that was would be in the stew is all the what would be natural al- or um, not ailments, but um, remedies remedies for the ailments of like um, the sumac berries are is good for upper respiratory and that also the the lentils are good for or is it lentils is good for upper respiratory and then the sumac is good for diarrhea so they're thinking that that he might have had the flu but it was also interesting that lentil stew is a common thing to make when somebody is mourning which i didn't know that and it turns out that it was because their dad was dying that he was making the stew not to trick not the intention wasn't to trick esau into giving up his birthright okay that just kind of happened because he saw esau was so excited which i kind of remember back in the back when we were growing up you know my brother and i would have gi joe's and we would swap gi joe's all the time and it was like well yeah that's that's your gi joe but I want that one, so I'll trade you this for that. Or, you know, you give me that stack of Oreos, and I'll give you this GI Joe. You know, and then later you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then later on, you, you know, punch him in the nose and take it. You know, so I, I could see, I could see where that was coming from. So, but anyway, it got me on the, got me on this kick of, of lentil stew. I don't, I, I might have had lentils once or twice. I can't remember. So yeah, I know I've never had them. I didn't when I was examining the bag this morning. I was trying to figure out what it was. So lentils is a legume, and I it's hard to find red lentils. I had to go to like four different stores to find red lentils. Um, but what interesting fact is once this stew cooks, once the lentils cook, they turn brown. Okay. So then that, ba- that 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 brings up the question of why was the stew red? Well, back then they called brown red. I'm glad you told me that because if our cook would have miraculously turned these red lentils into brown, I'd think she was a witch. I am. So uh, and they wouldn't have had like tomatoes and peppers available to them because even though and it's hard for me to think of biblical times and then think about the imports and stuff like that that were coming into the time and to think about anything because when you read the stories you don't think about what's going on you know in Italy (laughs) while this is going like you know the time Jesus is walking you know you're not thinking about things going on over you know over in america you don't think about that kind of stuff you don't think about the import coming in from 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 england you know i at least i don't um uh charlie i made lentil ham soup twice over the past month ate it for a week each time wow well cool buddy um we might be in for a treat then well, so so Charlie, um, you know, we got the the idea that is we're gonna make this this pot of uh, stew, and then I'm gonna take it to the church group tonight, and because uh, we were we were talking about it a couple weeks ago about this stew, and I got I got hung up on it, I really did, and threw me down a wormhole, and I have got to get this out of me. It's like that wild hair. You just got to get it out of you, you know? So, so we're going to do it. Uh, uh, I need to make some getting cold. Yeah. It's, it's chilly here. Cubs saw our breath when she opened the garage door. So what all is going in this stew, you ask me? All of this. So this is the recipe from Tori, uh, Tori Avery. Yes. Okay. And it's it's so simple. 
that it's it's got me thinking I'm missing something. And I'm sitting here thinking lentil is a legume, which is a bean, which takes all day long to cook. How are we going to get this bag of lentils cooked so in the her, time of our show? Her recipe says one to two hours. Wow. His or but the bag the bag on lentil says about thirty minutes. Wow! So, you know, if the chat runs good, then we can stay on. If not, then we'll post pictures at the end. Okay. Um, but it's it's simple. It's basically your she sauteing onions in olive oil, which olive oil is biblical. They talk about that all the time, um, and then. You're adding carrots and celery and garlic and cilantro. I don't have fresh cilantro because the store I was at didn't have any. So we've got dried. And then you add in veggie broth. And because I didn't get veggie broth, I got bouillon cubes. And I added an extra bouillon cube more than what the package said. Always need to. Yep. <laughs> so, so I got some veggie bouillon going over here, and that's what the teapot's for. Because it's got some hot water in there. Thought I'd speed up a little bit and add some hot water, so it didn't. So we're not going from cold up to a boil. So, uh, yep. Lentils are little guys. They don't take us long. Yep. That's. I was kind of looking. The package says thirty minutes, and you know, her recipe is an hour, hour, or it was one and a half to two hours. So I said, well, that's probably all prep time and cook stuff. So, right. So, now I was looking at this bag. Like I told you earlier, it, it reminded me of aquarium gravel, little tiny pellets. Yep. It didn't look like a bean or anything that I, I, not that I recognize. You can turn your heat up just a little bit. Now, there's a, there's also a thing where they take the lentils. They cook the lentils and then they smash it with honey and make like a pancake. I can't oh. pronounce the name of it, but I was like, oh, and that is brought up in Song of Solomon. They talk about that. So, uh, yeah, I was like, ooh, we'll have to look into that one. There was a guy, he does a, a thing on YouTube, a bunch of little shows, and it was like the Naked Archaeology or something like that. And that's where he, he went to, over to Israel, and was walking around and talking to him about the lentil soup and stuff like that. And I, I was like, ooh, that's pretty cool. And yeah, cilantro is not for everybody. No, you Tom. might as well pour Dawn dish detergent in something. I can't stand cilantro. I like it, but well, good thing my, my cousin, she's one that she doesn't like dried cilantro. She doesn't like fresh cilantro, but you get that little uh, plastic container. The, uh, it's like fresh, half dried. I don't know what it is, but it's over by the, the, the fresh stuff. A little plastic container. Mm -hmm. You get that, and she can eat that. She likes that one. Wow, that's strange. So, I don't know. But, so yeah. So, the the idea is going to be to take the leftovers to the church group and, you know, share it tonight when we're, when we're a group. So, and y'all are welcome to come with us. You just got to be down here in South Carolina. <laughs> I'm sure David wouldn't mind. But, uh, so, that's what we're doing this morning. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I got to looking about the, the fishes and the fish in the Sea of Galilee and all that stuff. But we'll get we'll, we'll 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 move on a little bit here. Gubbo, how was your week? Um, you had a you had a you had a friend that uh yeah um 
We can talk about that if you want. A little so, bit. So, we didn't have school on Monday, which is great. I could sleep in. Um, Tuesday, I went with my friend Abby. Wednesday, I went with my friend Abby. Thursday, I went with Abby. Um, went with her where? To school? No. We just went to go hang out. Abby graduated oh. with, with Peyton. I know she said she didn't have school Monday. Yeah, they but were. But then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, she was with Abby. Yeah, so. so. Yeah, after school we, after school we would just hang out. Okay. The dude. Um, Thursday I was with Abby and her friend Naomi, and Abby got three tattoos that day. It was a great time. She, she got one on her ribs, one right here, and one behind the the ear. The only one that got her was the one behind the ear. The ribs didn't hurt her at all. Um, driving home from the tattoo shop, which was up in Charlotte, um, I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw that one of my friend's dads put up something about his son. Um, my friend passed away Thursday morning due to a stroke in his sleep. And so Ooh. we have that funeral on Tuesday. Now, how old was this man? 18. Wow. Yeah. He, I'm 52 and just had one. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine being that young and going through that. Yeah. I need to add a little more oil there, Phil. They said one large onion, so I put in two like medium ones. Uh, the smell of those sauteing onions is amazing. Yeah. And that's our show them the olive oil bottle. Y'all know that one. I love that bottle. Well, I love mine. The one that you gave me for Christmas has a Carolina Panther emblem on it. Yeah. Good dude. So Mike's been on. Have you ever heard of what's it? Uh, news News Break. So Mike's on the News Break doing videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of it until mm -hmm. till then. Yeah, Charlie, it's a it's a tough one. He says sorry, Cub. Yeah, it's have, a tough one. She said this kid was, you know, he he, he was a he was a troubled kid. Um, he was really heavy into drugs his freshman and sophomore year, and then he went to rehab, and he would text us like every once in a while, "Hey, I'm at a month. Hey, I'm at six months," kind of thing. So we all stayed in contact with him. And he just got out a couple months ago from rehab. And then he had a good job. And he had a show. Man, that's awful. Yeah. I'm having a funeral. I'm, well, they, they have a visitation today. A funeral is actually tomorrow. But um, lady at church, her son... Un, no, un, unfortunately, I mean, no death is fortunate, but um, it was, he was my daughter's a camera. I think they were in school together, whatever, but he actually committed suicide. And that was, I think, three years ago. And now her other son, I haven't got the details behind it, but he just passed away. A couple of days ago, and they they got a visitation today and the funeral tomorrow. And again, I haven't talked to Wanda or anything. Rumors I heard was another suicide. I'm hoping that's not the case, but I'll find out whenever I talk. I don't know if I'll find out today because that's not the kind of question I really want to ask her during this time. Yeah. But uh, but that was just another unfortunate situation. Um, whenever Trey. Whenever he did it, I think he was 18, and I'm not sure about the the age of this one, but you know, anytime anytime that there's a death of a younger person, granted every death is tragic, but that's awful. Yeah, we had um, visitation Monday, the uh, visitation at harvest Monday in the funeral. Monday, Tuesday. Wait a minute. The Harvest Ministries? That's where I gotta go. Yeah. So maybe we must be what's the 
What's the person's name? Might be well. We'll we'll, we'll save it. Yeah, yeah. We'll save it. <laughs> but that that makes you feel better knowing it was a stroke and it wasn't suicide. I mean, like yeah. if if the death of a young person can you know be making you say it feels better, but so thoughts and prayers to their family. Yes, attention. Uh, but uh, yeah, don't say the name. But anyway, thoughts and prayers to their to their families. Um, so better news. So Cubs got a job. I think we told we talked about this before. She's working at a new ice cream place coming in. What's it called? Ninety degrees. Nineties. Nineties. Just nineties. Mm-hmm. Been a mental health crisis for the past few years among teens as well. Absolutely. What's printed on the spoon, Cabo? Tabasco. Show it. Show them in there. So my oldest daughter, two years ago, got me the bamboo set of Star Wars printed spoons. I, I really like them. I use the Darth Vader one all the time, the flat one. The flat spatula. You'll see it makes an appearance in most of my videos. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Cubs working at this... New ice cream place coming in town. It has they just had a soft opening Friday, and basically it was it was more for training, kind of to show, see so the kids could see how things are really going to go. Oh, yeah, they had way too many people working um, for the training, but you know it is what it is. Um, they did it Friday, and you had to have like each staff member got so many tickets. For people to come in so we got to go in there and, and they got to pick the menu and and you're probably ready to add the other stuff and uh yeah cup you're ready to add the other stuff um so they got to go in there and and try that out and you know just looking at the menu my sugar went up <laughs> of course mom got the got a red velvet milkshake and they're what it was was the I don't want to say niche, but they're not gimmick signature maybe. I don't know. Their, their little thing is like you get the the plastic cup, like uh, you know what your cold drinks come in, like your cold um coffee drinks. Okay, you get one of those. But it's got a layer of royal icing around the outside rim that um, they roll around in how whatever. Much? This says one close, but this is the dog. Yeah, just put it. Just just take the spoon, regular spoon, and dump in about two two heaps. Can you have too much garlic? When you start to sweat and you can smell it, you about reach the. Yeah, limit. that's a good. That's good. That's about a clove. Yeah. Um, so they take the, the cup and then they, they put the royal icing around all the way around it and then they roll it in whatever, like, um, if you got one with a Oreo cookie, it would have Oreo on the outside or like crumbles. Or if you got, mom got the red velvet, so it had red velvet cake all the way around the outside. Ooh. So it was like an edible we call rim. Edible rims. Yeah. Good morning, Mike. Keto Mike's in. How you doing, brother? Dude. Uh, well, I mean, Keto Mike. I was, I, I've been kicking around some uh, ideas for some corned beef. Because you just did a corned beef hash keto style. Right. And uh, that looked awesome. But I had been telling Tom that uh, I was at the store. I went to two grocery stores here at this end of town and a can just a can of Libby's corned beef was like five thirty. Five dollars and thirty cents. Mm. One was five thirty. Walmart was five thirty. Uh, the other place I was at was five forty. I go I was at the up here by um, 901 there across from TJ's. Okay. And it was seven dollars 
for a can of corned beef. Wow. I was like, uh, holy crap. So, needless to say, I didn't get any corned beef. Yeah, but that's one of the things that whenever I was growing up, that was one of my dad's favorite things to make was a corned beef hash. And he always had those cans of the corned beef. And whenever he made it, you know, they knew I had to have something else because there's just something about, I don't know if it's the spices or whatever it is, but there's something about the flavor of corned beef that I just cannot stomach. But my, my dad, my mom, my brother, they all loved it. And I mean, they very, every, almost every weekend, my dad was making that for breakfast. Yeah. And I always had to have something else. And then after St. Patrick's Day, and they have all these corned beef biscuits that go on sale at the grocery stores. Yeah. I saw these prices. I'm like, man, that's amazing. So I picked up three of them, brought them home, saw that little package of spices in it. I thought that's what would make it corned beef. So I just threw those packets away, not knowing that these briskets have already been brined. Oh, yeah. 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 And so I just tried to make me a regular brisket, ended up some type of pastrami or whatever, which I don't like either. And so I realized that it took a lot more. No, it was it was not what I thought it was. Yeah. And I had to end up, I ended up throwing two full, or actually all three of them, threw them away. Recently? L- no, last year after St. Patrick's Day. Oh, my goodness. I love corned beef. Well, I wish I'd have known yeah. that. Mike, really? sorry to hear that, buddy. Sorry. Give give Mama a big hug for me, man. Uh, uh, I hope everything goes well. She, So his wife had surgery, and... Uh, he said they had they had problems and they had to go back in and basically reverse it. So, uh, wow. You're in my thoughts and prayers, brother. Dad, what's barley? You don't have barley. Yeah, we don't have barley. Um, it said to barley would have been something that they would have had access to, but it said admit if you're gluten free. So I was like, well, I don't really need barley because I'm probably I'm not going to buy a whole bag a pound of barley right for a quarter cup because i don't know what else i'd use it for so uh so i didn't so i just said well i'm gonna admit it so right but uh you're gonna need eggs soon is it store the other day six dollars a dozen yeah um i just bought two dozen they were um 4.99 each and then the eighteen packs were seven ninety nine. Yeah, Sam's Club had them had them uh, reasonably priced. I think they were they were five ninety nine or six ninety nine or something like that for an eighteen pack. Okay. Yeah, Sam's Club had a, had a better deal. Beef barley soup. Ooh, that could be good. Maybe I'll try that. Maybe I will get some barley then and try that. Mm. So. So that was Cubs week. So how was your week? Uh, my week was all right. Just getting up, go to work, come home, go to bed. Yeah. It's a really, really slow week for me. Nothing nothing exciting at all. Oh, I got to talk to my best friend. <clears throat> okay. Because, so, Reagan, I love her though. She's amazing. But she needed a break from people so i have had a conversation with her since winter break um yeah and i don't see her anymore at school because i only have one class she is three so i don't see her and she doesn't like answer anybody but abby texted her and she was like um da 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 so 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 and then she texted me back and she was like hey Come meet me. I'm here. And I was like, okay, bet. Um, which is good. She's doing good. And now we plan to see each other at least twice a day. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so thought about getting chickens again. Lots of eggs. Right now we're having trouble with the our egg lady. She said her chickens aren't laying because it was so cold she said that the uh, chickens pretty much don't lay whenever it's you know freezing cold she only has 
I think seven. She's only got seven layers. Which and, I, I understand that because I don't want to lay any eggs when I can get cold <laughs> too either. <laughs> and Carol, don't text me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, it's been well. I, it's probably three weeks or so since I was talking to her last, and um, I haven't I haven't checked no in the end since then to see if she's had an accumulation up or not. Yeah. <laughs> Aldi had canned corned beef, a little three dollars. Oh, I have to go check that out. I have to go, yeah, I'll check that out. We went to Sam's and we got a whole bunch of stuff, so I got I got a lot of fresh vegetables I got to cook up. But uh, so my week, pretty uneventful. Uh, had to go. I had to schedule, so I ran out of medicine last week. And I had to schedule a appointment with the family doctor, you know, diabetes doctor. Right. But they say, oh, well, you need to get blood. And I'm like, well, all right. And everywhere I go, I got to get blood. I go into the grocery store, got to get blood. Go into to the bank, got to get blood. Go to the doctor, got to get blood. It's just crazy stuff, right? So I'm like, okay. Bank at the bank. If you're getting blood at the store of the bank, you shouldn't go to the store of the bank. Like, you ain't you ain't paying attention to the prices at the at the grocery store. Jeez, and peace. So anyway, I, I go to do that Monday, and they're like, "Well, you know, where's your insurance card? It's New Year. We got. Well, I haven't got my new insurance card. So I give them the one I got. Well, that you're not on record. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm right there. No, 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 no. So I'm like, well, my wife's probably got my card. So that was my Monday. So I said, well, let me oh, go over. I said, let me go over and get my medicine then, because now I can't get blood that I gotta have for Wednesday. So I said, let me go get my medicine because we called Thursday to get the prescriptions refilled. And I go in there and they got the two from the heart doctor, but not from the family doctor. So I'm like, well, what the hell? So I'm kind of bummed. And I was like, you know what? I went to thrift stores. I found a couple things at the thrift store and made my day. I found a book that we talked about a group. It's called a thousand, a thousand gifts. Um, I haven't read it yet, but it, you know, the, a couple people, a group were talking about how it was such, such a good book and they found it at the, at the thrift store. So I was like, all right, cool. So I checked it out. I found it. So that's on my next to read list. And, um, Found a little crock. Uh, show them the little soup crock that I got. It's it's behind R2. It's up there behind R2. So I've gotten this little soup crock. Well, I found one just like it, exactly like it, but with the lid. Show them in the. Yep. So I found one like that, but with a lid for two bucks. Yeah, Teresa used to have that same color, I believe, with that same pattern and everything. She had four of them, but they didn't have lids, and they were like soup bowls. Mm -hmm. And I remember a couple of recipes that we made. You could actually cook in them in the oven. Yeah. And the cheese and stuff melted over the top. That was but the. They, they've all been dropped and shattered since yeah. then. So I was like, all right, cool. You know. So I so now I have a, a set. One has a lid. One doesn't. That's fine. I, I don't care. Chances of using a lid are slim. Right. So am I able to add my lentils now? Is your other veggies starting to soften? And your onions starting to caramelize? I mean yep. the carrots are. Yep. Then go ahead. And you have to scrape the fond off the bottom once you get the liquid in there. Um so well, anyway. I I so I found that book and I was kind of excited. You know, the wife was even excited about it. So surprisingly, she hasn't read it. But she's also going back to school. Her classes started again, and she's got like one semester left. She starts her new job next next week. This so is this no, this is her last week at her job. Yeah. We had some like that growing up. Oh, French onion soup. Yeah, that's what I was thinking it would be. It was for French onion soup, right? Um, I believe that's what we actually the thing whenever we cooked in them, that's what we cooked yeah. in the oven. Yeah. But I, I got it mainly for presentation for videos. You know, I thought it was kind of a cool little crock and oh okay. Yeah. And then 
It says, add two quarts of broth bags. Yep, so add, it, add that and then fill it up again. Stir that. Stir it stir, up. Stir, stir it up. Um, French onion soup sounds good. Yes, it does. We always make it in the crock pot now. You know, the one time I, I smoked the onions and then made French onion soup. Wow, that, that was good. Added, added a little more depth to it. My brother, Steven, what's up, brother? How you doing? There you go. See, it's still steaming a little bit, so I'm hoping that'll help. I'm hoping that'll help the heating process. Right? Yep. Scrape the bottom real good there, Cabo. Ooh, yeah, baby. Johnny Mags. What's up, brother? How you doing? How's the kids doing, man? Seen you had them out, out and about. Uh, and I have to work four days this week. I work Monday and Tuesday. Yep. They actually open now. Um. Was the soft opening like the day before the grand opening? Or? No. So, Dad technically got the term wrong. It wasn't necessarily the soft opening. What it was was family and friends come in. Candy. To try How are you thing. doing? Um, but I, I believe we're in our soft opening now, which we're going to be in for like a month, maybe a month and a half, until we all get the hang of what we're doing. Because we're, it's a new business. Like they just got everything in. So Big D. What's up, buddy? It's not like. A couple people have to learn how to do everything while well, all learning how to do everything. Right. So I believe we're in our soft opening for a month, maybe a month and a half, until we all feel comfortable in what we're doing, and then we're going to do it very differently. Okay. But I believe we're open to the public now. Yep. So we did that Friday. We went to we went to that Friday. Doesn't sound like there's many options that would be suitable for me to go in there and enjoy. No. It. <laughs> no. Uh, so, you go, so when you Cub was when Cub was, they were talking about it, and they were like, you know, who's all coming? Your mom and dad, and she said, Mom will. Dad, mom, I don't know. Mom, she goes he because a... he's diabetic, and he's probably going to get a. Uh, he's probably going to need insulin before he walks in through the door. And the manager was like, "Okay, so I already know what your dad looks like because I've seen I watched one of y'all's live, so I can just print that picture out." And say he cannot come in. <laughs> and I was like laughing that. about that. Post office America's yeah. most wanted photo. And yeah. then he he came in and his wife, she, they have that little kid. Yeah. And she was like, which one is your parents? I'm like, those two. And Darth automatically looked at me, looked at dad and goes. I didn't order anything. Uh, Mom got a milkshake and I tried it. I had a little bit of it. And then, then we went next door to the uh, new... Brewery slash pizza place. It's um, it's an extension of Hobos. Okay. Um, it's called Off the Tracks. It was pretty good pizza. It was, it was good pizza. A lot of people wasn't, get mad about Off the Tracks because their some of the employees have Hobo shirts on. Yes. Because they don't know that they're 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 intertwined. Yeah. Um, it was good pizza. It wasn't any like. You know keto crust but it was a wood fire so you wouldn't like it mm. wood fire pizza they got a yeah. huge oven um, i don't know what, what it is about the, the wood fire flavor on the crust but it just does not sit good with me what was the other place that we went to millstone here? millstone you're right yeah you don't like wood fire pizza i i like it i like it a lot but that was my that was kind of my I don't want to say cheat day. I'm going to say that was my my uh, my carb day. Right. That was my carb day. Uh, so Keto Mike would would he he'll, he always gets on this. He says, "Don't say you can't have it. Don't call it a cheat day. That's just your carb day." <laughs> so so I didn't eat nothing all like I had cheese and and deli ham, sliced ham, <laughs> and then all day, and then I went to there and had had pizza. I bet you I'd still like it, like a crustless pizza or 
you know, all the toppings in a little dish or something with no bread. Yeah, I didn't ask them if they could do that. Because I wanted to try the pizza. I mean, I like the right. crust. I so. check on my pizza. Is that uh, what's in the front front? Yeah. Uh, how's life in Hong Kong, Candy? Yeah, how how's things over over yonder? We haven't. Uh, I don't watch the news, so I don't know if there's anything going on over in Hong Kong. I don't know either. I don't even know who won the ball game last night. I didn't know there was a ball game last night. Oh, we talked about it last week. I'm, the only game. Wait a minute. Yeah, I did because I watched it. it. Was the Patrick Mahomes guy won? Yep. Yep. So the the Chiefs. I, I saw the end of it. So the right. Chiefs in Jacksonville. I had it on, but I wasn't really paying attention to it because I I care less about the Chiefs. And uh, uh, you just don't want to turn into a weaker month. That's right. Um, good. Today is Chinese first day of the Chinese. Chinese New Year, maybe. I am good. Mm-hmm. And today is Chinese first day of oh, of Chinese. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Giants. Giants got to hand it to them. Yeah. So what I was. Oh, that's right. I, I forgot about Eagles that destroyed the Giants. So I was. Good. I had it on last night and I turned the volume down. So I was, I was trying to read. It was early. It was like nine o'clock. I was whipped. I didn't get a nap. My sugar's been high as I'll get out. Just because the thyroid's messed up. That's that's what I was going to get to with the with the appointment. But so I was I was just sitting there reading, and I was the pages started reading me, <laughs> and I looked over and it was like twenty to nothing, and I was like, holy crap! I woke up. Next thing I know, the news is on at like four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm like, wow. yeah, yeah, I was in bed before nine o'clock last night. I was I'm sure, I'm sure I was snoring by so now. I was out. I was yeah, I was I was out, but. But anyway, so back to to the doc's appointment. I ended up giving blood then Tuesday, and all that was good. And then went to the appointment Wednesday afternoon. And it was good catching up with her because I hadn't talked with her since, uh, oh, it's Happy New Year. It's Chinese New Year. That's what it is. Um, What's that? Yeah, well, (laughs) I, I just read it, and... You know, did Mama have your insurance card? Yep, All right. she had my insurance card, so so I had to give, so I gave my blood and then went to the appointment, got in there, and uh, A1C come back at a seven point four, so better higher than what I wanted, but way better than what I expected. <laughs> Look at my bruise. I just had mine. Mine was seven point two, so. I beat you. Yep. Oh. Yep. But my thyroid's also like a ten. Uh-huh. So, where in August it was a two. So, but I have that problem with with treatment. Is my thyroid's like a roller coaster? It's right. up and down. So when the thyroid's high, so is my sugar. Okay. And it doesn't matter what you eat. You can eat just six pieces of Swiss cheese, and it's going to still be high. Mm. So. Really got to watch that. Terry's in. Good morning, Madwood. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Um, so, so, anyway, that was that. And then I met the guys from church group, and we went to Sweet Caroline's, which is a barbecue place over in McCombs. I've heard about it. Um, I've never been there, but I didn't know it was a barbecue place. I knew that they served barbecue, but I thought they served all kinds of stuff there. Oh, they do. But it's mainly barbecue. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't aware. Yeah, because yeah. I was with Abby and my friend, and my friend who works at Sweet Caroline sends me a picture of the back of Dad, like Dad sitting in the chair, and all I see is the back of Dad. And I was like, "Why did you just send a picture of my dad?" He goes, "Cause he's here. I see him. Like they can go say something to him." Yeah, one of the swim. He, he was one of our swim kids, and he did. I, I thought I saw his truck out there in the parking lot, but I never saw him. So right. why he didn't come up and say, hey, I don't know. And he goes, he was with a lot of people. And I there was, there was a total of four of us. And he was like, it was literally me and three other guys. Yeah. 
And I was like, I don't think he's with a lot of people. It's not like my dad. He doesn't do that. Yeah. So it was. But there was still people, Nolan. It was good. I got the two guys got the pork plate with. uh, It was pulled pork. You got a half pound of pulled pork. Uh, baked beans and what was the other thing they got? I don't remember. And coleslaw come with the dinner. I got the brisket plate, so you got eight ounces of sliced brisket, which was three pretty big slices, two of them fatty, one lean. And then I got green beans and I splurged and got the fried squash. Ooh. That was my naughty part. Yeah, I got the fried squash. The squash is good. Yep, yep. And uh, it, it was good. It, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I ate the whole plate. and Well, I ate everything on the plate. I didn't eat the plate. But <laughs> I ate, ate it all, and I was it was just enough. I was full. And, you know, I could have done without the fried squash. But, you know, I, I don't get fried very often, so I did. It was funny because that same, the same kid called me. At the butt crack of dawn, just to tell me that he went past my house. Woke up, was, I woke up to 15 missed calls. And by the one that I answered, it was, Hey, what do you want? It is five in the morning. What do you want? Oh, yeah, I just want to let you know that I passed your house. Everybody's home. But, like, no, I am home. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Kind of crappy how they decide who would play the home team for the bank. Man, you know what? It's I, I gotta I gotta say this correct, like politically correct. Oh no. Everybody hates the Bengals. Nobody wants to see the Bengals do good except for the, the home team. If you're not a Bengals fan, you don't want to see them do good. The NFL doesn't want to see them do good. It's just one of those. Dad, this is not, where you get canceled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and I'm a Bengals fan. Have been for since I was born. And you can turn the heat up a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Whoa, that's a little much. But uh, hey, Carrie, how are you? She uh, got my message. Everybody, everybody hates on the Bengals. You know, they've been a crappy team. They. They won't spend the money on the current good players. They'll get the they'll, they'll sign players and they'll run them into the ground. And then when they're not worth nothing, they get two or three more years out of out of them somebody else, and then they send them off. <sighs> Try not to get emotional. Joe Burrows from Athens. Yep. And so it's it's hard. It's hard to be a Bengals fan. It really is. Uh, nobody, nobody outside here. They, they say, "Oh, you're a Bengals fan." We're sorry. I'm like, yep, but it's better than a Browns fan. Oh, last time I was a Bengals fan, I really watched them and kept up with them. It, I mean, I don't even remember if I had moved out of the house yet from you know being. I think I moved out when I was 23, but a uh, Boomer Esiason was the quarterback. Yep. And that's the last time that I really watched and followed the Bengals. Yep. Boomer Sison, he he was a great quarterback. Icky Woods, you know, I still do the Icky the Shuffle. Icky Shuffle. Uh, 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 uh. Carrie, we are doing a lentils, a red lentil stew. Inspired by the book of Genesis. Uh Jacob and Esau. Uh being a Bengals fan is like a high state fan. Exactly. That, that is exactly it. And y- y- y'all don't know. I mean, it's just, it's rough. It's rough being a Bengals fan. Um, but they play today. They do play today. And they're playing Buffalo. Um, they play in Buffalo? Yep. So, cold game. I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, Burroughs is talking some stuff about the. Uh, about being the underdog because they're, I mean, they're picked to lose. Okay, Burroughs, is that the quarterback? Cincinnati quarterback? Yep. Okay. Yep. Joe Burroughs came out of LSU. Yep. Good quarterback. Good kid. So, 
it'll be interesting to see what see what happens today with that. And then the the Stars and the Niners play tonight. The Cowboys and the okay. Niners. I'll probably be in bed. But is that a, a late game, eight thirty game or something? Yeah, I'll eight be, eight thirty. I'll be in bed by the time they get rolling. Yep, Mike, the, the Falcons. You don't hear anything about the Falcons. No, you don't. You don't hear nothing. And I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about uh, – we were talking football and how when you go to, the, like, the Bengals game, you know, I used – when we would go to the Bengals game, I mean, you'd be up in the stands and you'd get in fights, like literal fist fights, shoving matches, all that, over offensive defense. I mean, we you got a guy with the, with the jersey on for somebody with the defense, somebody with the jersey on for the offense, and one's yelling at the other one about how the other side sucks. And you don't, I mean, Bengals on Bengals. I mean, you got guys fighting each other. And then you go to the Panthers game, and there's so many other teams out there that it's unreal. And you know that wouldn't happen in Cincinnati. You didn't wear anybody else, any other team's jersey in Cincinnati. If you showed up in, in like, a, a Green Bay Packers jersey, you're probably going to have to defend that jersey out in the parking lot. <laughs> it really? used to it used to be rough, yeah. Used to be rough. I don't know where it is now, but it used to be rough. So somebody would actually start trouble with you just because you had a different jersey on? Yes. That's oh, weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet you I've been to 50 Panthers games, and... I mean, I've never seen that kind of people treating other people like I, that. I saw when I was leaving the Panthers game, one one uh, one Panthers game I was at, one, they, there was a guy who was wearing a Buffalo jersey, and somebody started cocking off to him, but he was he was hammered. And that, that guy was, that was hammered was cocking off to the guy in the Buffalo jersey. And uh, I got into it with one guy. We went to the Tampa Bay game. It was Tampa Bay and Carolina. And I was sitting up in the stands. I fell asleep during the third quarter. I mean, that's how bad it was. I was hammered. I fell asleep during the third quarter. But uh, I was wearing an Ohio State number seven jersey, which was Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn was playing for Carolina. Mm -hmm. So this guy started picking on me and started trying to start stuff with me about, you know, wearing a Tampa Bay jersey. Well, I kind of, you know, of course, I'm a dummy, a stubborn. Well, I I went right back at him. I was like, hey, you dumb SOB. Why don't you, you know, do your research and look, you know, a bunch of other other names. And he said, what you talking about? I said, it's an Ohio State jersey. Ted Ginn played for Ohio State. This is the same number he's got and the same number he's wearing now. And he was like, oh. So I, I stood up and I was like, so now what do you want to do? Now you want to say something? And he backed up and, you know, kind of stopped and, and, and didn't, you know, didn't have a conversation anymore. Yeah. So when anybody wonders where I, well, me and Peyton and Cindy get it from, this one, I think. Yeah. So. Anyway. Uh, I've given Uber rides to people that went to school with Joe Burroughs, said he was really a nice guy. Cool. Yep, in, infighting sounds like a family reunion. But yeah, so what it was. They're yelling now. Defend the, uh, are they? Are they turning colors? Well, the, what color do you see? All right. We'll lift it up a little closer to the camera so Tom can see. Down. Down, 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 down. There you go. Huh, cool. I uh, defend my Fackman jerseys at the Charlotte game. Yep. They tried to tear it off. Yep. You get a few of them that are like that. Um, the Falcons is probably the the one that will get you in the most trouble here. Um, you know, of course, up, up north, Cincinnati games, if you were wearing a, a Pittsburgh jersey, you're definitely going to – you're definitely scrapping. Used to be, 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 used to be. I'm sorry, did you say scrapping? Yeah. You've been hanging out with us too much. Scrapping's been around forever. That's man. what we used in high school. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was that was way back in the day. So, I mean. The, the street. I don't see it. 
I mean, we could talk junk about about any any team, but when it comes to to Pittsburgh or Cleveland, there was there was usually some bad blood in there, and a lot of times there was blood all over the place. <laughs> but uh, anyway, again, I didn't. I mean, I've, I've been going to Panthers games for you know, many many years, and I don't know if it's because of the section I was in or what, but I've never really seen that much of an issue. I mean, and my seats were section 532, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I mean, that's the same thing. It was four PSLs, and we went there. That's probably why the PSL. Probably, probably five years in a row, every home game until the lady who owned the PSLs moved. And But, I mean, even you know, our big rival, Atlanta, I mean, countless people there with Michael Vick jerseys and stuff yep. on. Nobody tried to fight them or anything just yep. because of the jersey. Well, but it's your PSLs. You get into – because those if there's any issues, they can lose their seats. So if you're up in the nosebleed section or up in the – or I would call the working man section. Say, we were in 532. We were almost to the top of the rim. Yeah, but you're in PSLs. That's a different section than – oh. Because of the, the PSLs, you're you're paying for those seats throughout the year, right? And you can lose those seats if there's trouble, right? Or you know any kind of unruly mischief or whatever, you can lose those. So everybody behaves in PSLs. You get over to the nosebleed section where the common man's working, worker man's tickets are, and yeah, it, it's a whole different ball game. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen skirmishes going on, but not near as bad as what you know, like oh, you're talking man. about Cincinnati and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. The stuff <clears throat> you see on TikTok now, ballgame. Yeah, we used to. That was a common thing back in the day. Uh, There's a lot of uh, physical altercations that happened in one week, where um, at South Point. There were 16 fights. Yeah. And oh, now Mike, yep. my buddy Hugh went to IPA, who left that school to go to there, is like, I shouldn't have left. This sucks. I'm like, I told you not to go. Yeah, there was one video going around for a long time. I can't remember what football stadium it was, but they were throwing stuff at Santa Claus. The guy dressed in Santa outfit. But... He was apparently cheering for the wrong team or something. Yep. They were throwing beers and stuff at him. I'm like, man, that that's gonna get somebody killed. Yep. And then, like, you know, we were talking. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember times where where, where we come out of Riverfront Stadium, and you stayed with the crowd. You didn't venture outside of the crowd. Going back to the to the parking lot mm-hmm. or the parking garages because it was a bad area at that time. Wow. Yeah. So you stayed with the crowd and you were on high alert all the time. Uh, so Mike says he threw a couple guys uh, three rows down. They left him alone after messing with him about his jersey. Yep. Because they were beer brave. <laughs> Yeah, once I, I mean we was we were nosebleed section and uh, that that guy was he was just ripping on me about an Ohio State jersey. He thought it was a he thought it was a Tampa Bay jersey, and I was about to throw him over the edge, the back way, because <laughs> we were up at the very top. I mean the birds. Can I go ahead and add in the season? Yeah, is that what it says? Well, the birds were were the only thing higher than us, the clouds. Exactly. And uh, that fellow just, he was a seat right behind me. He just about went over the edge. Oh, yeah. Oops. Okay. So. But fortunately, it's not like that now. My, my one cousin, he takes his daughter and the son there all the time. Bengals games. And I'm sure they see it as some mischief, but not like it used to be. Right. And my brother, his. You know, him and his wife, they always bring their daughter. She's only eight years old. Well, she might be nine now, but you know, bring her to all the games. Yeah. They've got three PSLs, one for each of them. Yeah. If you're in the PSLs and you're you're 
in decent shape. But if you're up in the in the the working man's area, you know that that's that can get rough. This smells disgusting, by the way. What is it? Cumin? Yes. Smoked cumin. Oh. It smells disgusting. It always smells like tacos to me. Yeah, in the in the mid nineties, it was it was some rough stuff back then. Don't come up there. Yeah, Johnny, I wouldn't go up there in a Yankees jersey for nothing. He's up in New England area. I wouldn't go up there with a around Boston. No way. Yankees. Mm. Yankees. New York Yankees. Oh, that's baseball. Ain't yeah, that's baseball. Okay. Yeah, that's, I, you can. I mean, Rusty I, doesn't keep up with the with the sport. <laughs> I, I mean, that's another language to me. You start talking about baseball teams. I I do. One of them is a like the Yankees. I, I know I've heard that name. I've heard of Dodgers. I think. Mm-hmm. And if there's. I mean, you could offer me a hundred dollars to name five baseball teams. I couldn't do it. Uh, I grew up a Reds fan. I don't watch baseball. I can't unless I'm sitting at a bar or you know at a restaurant or something. But I, uh, this not we grew up. I grew up a Cardinals. That's St. Louis. Yeah. I do know that because I'm from that area. And when I was little, is that enough? Grand- a little more. My grandparents. You want to like a palm of your hand. And uncles always thought it was great. Let's take little Rusty to the baseball games. And my mom and dad made me go. They told me that, you know, grandpa or uncle Joe or whatever wants to do this and spend time with you. Don't tell them, no, you don't want to go. You know, they made me go. So I do remember baby. St. Louis Cardinals. Not much of a stupid thing. One baby. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't wear a Yankees jersey. There's, I mean, they're a good club, but they kind of, they kind of went. Uh, how do I say it? Mainstream. So, where I mean, the Reds kind of did the same thing. They went mainstream because Fifty Cent used to wear the the hat with the the Reds hat. That smells. This, I can what smell is it. This for? Lemon pepper. So instead of sumac. Do I ask them that? No. Uh, then there's something else. Like, uh, something that says lemon pepper. Or lemon. No. It's like a teaspoon or something. I mean, it says it in here, but it's like in the directions. Well, yeah, add it, add it with the. Add it now. Okay. Uh, go Mets. Man, I didn't even know the Mets still had a team. <laughs> I don't I don't follow baseball. I really don't. Uh it's a launcher. Professional launcher. Yeah, but you need to add the dried and it's half of what it says. So about half that pack. Half the whole pack? That's wow. a lot. <laughs> Gary, you're all good, hon. A half cup, so I need a fourth cup of this. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yes. I can even open it. Uh, I don't know what the dog's ripping about. Oh, I do. Went to Fenway wearing a brave stuff. No trouble. Uh, Sox fans around. And they were buying food and beer. Huh. Hey, shut up. Well, good. I don't. Uh, I don't remember. I mean, we would go to some Reds games, but I don't remember having any trouble at the Reds games. Now, what city is the Reds? Cincinnati. Oh, okay. So we were where I grew up. We were we were in a cornfield uh, north of Dayton, right in between Dayton and Lima, which is about forty five minutes north of Cincinnati. So if you look I seventy five. You got Cincinnati go up about I don't know probably about. Two inches, three inches on the map, and that's where he was. Um, so uh, we didn't have much trouble there. Uh, and since moving south, 
you know, had that a couple run-ins in, in Panthers games, and but they was quick to back down. They was just giving you some static, and then once you buffed up, they kind of backed down. So uh, I haven't had any other issues. You know, we went to a, we've been to basketball game. We went to a, a Hornets game. Well, they weren't the Hornets then, the Bobcats. The Bobcats. They, it was a year before they were – the season before they went back to the Hornets. Okay. Uh, we went to, to a Bobcats game. It was all right. Uh, we, we had nosebleed seats. Just pour it all in there. Yeah, I'm like, I'm using the half-four-cup line. Um, yeah, when I was IT department at Bojangles, we had box seats. And they had you no know, free tickets all the time. And I had – free tickets to the box and I wouldn't go to a basketball game because yeah. I didn't look like basketball. I, I didn't mind. I mean, that, that they played San Antonio. So I got to see, uh, Oh shoot. What's the guy's name? I can see his face. Tall center that took over after Robinson left. Um, Oh, I, somebody help me. I can't think of what the guy's name is. Took over center after David Robinson left. Ah, 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 ah. You can turn your heat down a little bit. That's thickening it up pretty nice. It looks like it gets too. Duncan. That's his name. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Tim Duncan. And we were sitting down. Um, we were sitting down on while they were warming up. We got to go down courtside. And that was pretty cool because the kids were there with us. And you guys got to see that. Yeah. And it was kind and of I neat. remember halfway through, this kid behind us threw up. Oh, yeah. That was disgusting. Yeah, we were up. that. So our seats, we were up, I don't know, probably about a dozen rows from the rafters is where, where our actual seats were. And so we were down, down in front watching the warm up. And then once the real game started, we had to take the elevator up to, I don't know, the 38th floor or whatever but it was it was up there but it was it was still kind of neat first time i've been to a a pro game uh been a couple few college games that was pretty cool yeah the kid threw up and it wasn't like he missed he got what he i guess targeted he got our signs and stuff we had little signs yep uh, so yeah, the minor league games we used to have. Well, we still do, still do the minor league for uh, well, the Charlotte Knights. I forget who their their major league team is, but they were they used to be about twenty minutes up the road, and then they built a new stadium and moved. I don't know, hour and a half away. I mean, they're north North Charlotte now. Um, we went to one of their games, and that was a lot of fun. Of course, I was drinking beer then, and the company was paying for for us. So as long as you had tickets, we, uh, you know, <laughs> we kept putting down the tall boys. <laughs> uh, I went to one night's game because it was, uh, from our church, it was like a Christian music night. They had a little concert after the game, and there was a whole bunch of us in church. And they went to the game, watched it, and I remember, I don't know, know what it was called, but there was like a pause or a, a break, and they had kids coming down, spinning their heads around on a baseball bat and then trying to run the bases. They were all yeah. busy and stuff. But it was a, a little good family night. But I did yep. that one time. Yep, never trust a kid to handle his whiskey. <laughs> I think he'd had too much sugar. Because it was like cotton candy out the wazoo. And oh, my gosh. There was all kinds disgusting. of stuff. Yeah. It was some nasty stuff. But we hadn't been to a, a, a game of any sort in quite a while. Trying to think the last one I was at. Now, I was supposed to go with my brother the last home game at the Panther Stadium, but I had just had my stroke. 
and I just got home from the hospital on third no, Friday, and the game was Saturday, and I just wasn't ready to walk up there and stuff. Yeah. But I tell you what, if you guys are ever in uh, downtown Atlanta, go check out that College Hall of Fame, the College Football Hall of Fame. That is a really, really neat place to go. That is really awesome. Um, my one cousin, they stay in Noonan, and we went there with them, and then we walked around Centennial Park and all that. That was a really cool place. Uh, the only thing I remember Centennial Park from is whenever we had the Olympics in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and that's where the guy supposedly built the the pipe bomb and blew up the bomb in Centennial Park. Yep. I remember the incident. I can't remember the guy's name or anything, but that's what I think about when I think of Centennial Park. Yep, it's kind of neat. You could uh, you could buy when they were building that. You could buy the family could buy bricks, and then you could write your name in. Right, and then so as you're walking through there, you see all these bricks. And my one cousin who stays in Alpharetta, which is north North Atlanta, they his family's actually got a brick in there somewhere. Okay, and so that was kind of neat. But uh, the College Football Hall of Fame was really cool. Um, you know, we talked to uh, I guess it's been a, been a little while now. He took us to a. Uh, Atlanta United game. Oh, that was so fun. Oh, my fault. That was so fun. Oh, Mike's got, Mike's got a brick there. The whole family does. Sweet. Yeah, the, the Atlanta game, that the Atlanta so United fun. game. I had never been to a professional soccer game. I'd been, uh, you know, we'd seen the kids play and we'd seen, uh, I think it was high school, but I'd never seen a professional one. Yeah, I haven't seen one. And I tell you what, that was a lot of fun. Now, of course, through Dad his didn't know what he was talking. Through his connections, he got box seats, and we were the only thing in front of us was a camera guy, but to separate us from the from the the, the pitch, the soccer. Yeah, the call the pitch. Yeah, we were we were right there. The camera guys. I mean, we were. It was awesome, and. I was like, dude, we need. We're going to try to go again. It was a lot of fun. I, I liked it. You know, because Tommy did soccer for four or five years. You know, in the youth league and stuff like that. And I, that's the only experience I have with soccer. Uh. Yeah. If and, and that was one of the crazy parts was, so we're where we were sitting was opposite of. You know, like where the where they they sing the national anthem and where the um, I, I don't know what they call it the home crowd where they swing the banners and the flags and all and then that. They have like a celebrity come and smash. Yeah. That thing. So at, at the time, uh, George Lopez was the guy that came in, and he got to hit the hammer uh, on the nail, and uh, we were directly opposite of that. So we got. You couldn't really see it, see it without binoculars, but you could kind of see what was going on over there. I remember I was told Mark, I said, if I get hit by a soccer ball, I'm going to fight. Yeah, there was, hit by a ball, there, was one that came, there was one that came close, but they had the net up because it was practice. So they had the net around the whole back end. And, and then that's when Mark goes, oh, yeah, but like, when it starts, the net goes away. Yeah, uh, they, um, they pulled the net down. That was, that was a lot of fun. We enjoyed we enjoyed that a lot. And last time I was in Atlanta, it was the last Atlanta Falcons Carolina Panthers football game in the old stadium. The following season, they opened up the brand new, I think it's what Mercedes Benz Stadium now. And so the the last time I was in Atlanta was the Panthers game before that new stadium opened. So I haven't seen the new stadium yet. Yeah, it was a good time. Can't wait to go back. Look forward to it. Now with Mama's new job, we'll be able to do some more, you know, get around a little bit easier. So, but when does that uh, new job start? This is her last week at her current place. Okay, so, I knew it was close. Oh, come! What? Get the get the things. The things. The things. Yeah. 
So, before I forget and we get out of here, tomorrow's Rusty's birthday. Yes, it is. I'll be so, 53 years old. So, <laughs> get up there, Rusty. What? Come on, Rusty. Get up there. Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn this around a little bit. Okay, so, y'all can't see that, but what we I'm, I'm shooting a video. I tried. Can they see everything? Yep, there you go. So, what we have is keto cake pops. Oh. He tried making a cake and that just failed. <laughs> so, we're not, going, we're not going to tell him that it was a, a failed cake. We'll let the video come out. But that is keto icing. With We took the keto icing, added a little bit of coconut oil to it, heated it up, stirred it up so it made it like a glaze. Right. And then you have inside is a cake ball that is keto cake okay. from Duncan Hines. Yeah, I saw the box of cake mix over there. I thought you were yep. planning on making something. So I, did. I, I did. I, I shot a video yesterday where I smoked a cake. Now, I was, I got to go ahead and say it. Damn it. <laughs> so I used the football pan that you got me. Right. Now, this cake mix made it very thin and edges, but then the bottom was, the middle was really thick. And I cooked it, and I thought it was done, so when I flipped it out, it didn't do so good. Have a great week, Carrie. Bye, Carrie. See you, Carrie. Um, you're getting a lot of happy birthdays. Oh, thank you. Uh, so. I'm glad I made it to this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're celebrating. Cool. Um. So, no, I didn't roll a cake on the paper. But, so when I flipped it out, I mean, you guys will see. The video's coming out Wednesday. It was a train wreck. But, Mama said, that looks terrible. It'll never ice, right? So, she came up with this idea where you take the cake and basically you crumble it all up. You add a little bit of icing to it. And then you roll it into a ball. Then you stick it on... The, the wax paper or the parchment right. paper and we put toothpicks in it and we put it in the fridge and let it let it uh harden and then she she made the icing which was just the coat the keto vanilla icing heated it up with a little bit of coconut oil and made it so it was like a glaze and then we dipped them just like you would buckeyes okay yeah tamra whenever she was in high school she did a lot of this kind of stuff and would bring treats to her friends and teachers. And she would do the same thing, crumble up the cake after she made it, mix in some icing. But she used a, like a, a little scoop of meatball or melon ball or whatever, and she would you know, pop those out and then dip them in chocolate and stuff. Well, I wore, hers wasn't keto. I, I wore gloves, and Cub, you can't reach that, but it's a it's a keto Duncan Hines box. That's what it is. Awesome. So, well, I'm getting tired of holding this. I'm yep, going to eat it. Yep. So, I need to get the taste test. So, hold on, hold on a second. I got to cut this off because I'm, I need the taste test for the video. <laughs> so, let me do this. Excuse me, guys. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to do this taste test. He's trying to multitask right now. I am. Let's see how do I let me let me figure out how to do screen record. Screen recorder start. All right, Rusty. Tell me what you think of this keto. All right, here we go. Keto cake, keto icing. I'm really excited. Looks good. Here we go. Cannot tell at all that it's keto. I really like this one. This, this tastes this tastes really, really good. 
I really like this this cake mix, and I'm not just saying it because I made it. Now you can't tell that I smoked it. You, do you get any smoke flavor? I get no smoke flavor. If you wouldn't have told me, I would not have guessed it. I could not. I cannot taste. <clears throat> but man, that that icing gives you the sweetness that you crave, and I mean, <laughs> this is really good. All right. Cannot tell that this is keto. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. All right. So that'll be in the video. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> so if you ever wonder, buddy, we do care. <laughs> All right, Kelp, how's our stew going? Oh, hot. There's, there's our lid going. Hot. There's there's a pot holder back there. Um Ooh. you just you... stir it up, that looks good. Is our lentil so our lentils can y'all see that? Like so our them. lentils turn brown. Right. I don't know if I like the consistency of this. I think it's, it's supposed to be a stew. Is perfect. It's supposed to be a stew. I think so. It just good. plate it up. Yep. Okay. The, is there lentil salt? Go ahead, Dad. Touch one. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> give me a spoon. I'll try it. Because it said to add salt and pepper to taste, so we may need to add a little seasoning. Caution! Hot. It's not that bad if you're just looking at it. Mm. That's not bad. I like that. It does need salt and pepper. Yes. So let me help you out here. I got it. Well, you haven't tasted it. So. I got it. You're trying to salt and pepper it to his taste without tasting it yourself. You're good. That's actually not bad. It's kind of real earthy. Well, isn't that what it's supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. Can't tell it's keto. Tastes really good. Blah. <laughs> okay. What, Dad, you got to come back. Uh, Burl Ives. Tastes like I'm eating a Krispy Kreme donut or something. I mean, this is I, really, really good. I really liked it. Uh, I mean, it's a Duncan Hines. The problem is, is it's $6 a fuck. Freaking uh, box. Um, let me help you out here. Because <coughs> it's close. Turn the heat down. Um, okay, I watched this show called um, 100 Stupid Ways to Die or whatever. Try one. Okay, I will in two seconds, Dad. Um, yeah, that used to be real popular back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. That was a very popular TV show. Like and I, I know there's a game, but I'm talking like the TV show and the one guy like died because he ate too, he had too much carrot supplement, too much like vitamin C or whatever. Wow. But this reminds me by the color of one of the things that this he always had kale smoothies, and he had too much of it, and he died because he had too much kale smoothies. The one episode of that show that always sticks out in my mind all these years later is a woman killed herself by, she was on the pier fishing, casting out her fishing pole. She caught a fish, was all excited, jerked her pole back towards her, yanking the fish out of the water. Stand over here so you can see it. And the fish coming down, she's looking at it, 
uh, gazing with the mouth open, the fish lodges in her mouth, mm -hmm. and the fins, whenever you try to pull the fish out, grab the inside of her mouth, and she can't get the fish out, and she chokes to death. Tastes a little something. It's really earthy, but it's good. That's what it's supposed to be, though. Yeah. Try this and you move. Add a little bit more. I saw the one episode where the girl got her foot or her, I think she got her foot stuck in like the bottom of the hot tub. And she literally drowned to death. Well, how prevalent is the uh, cilantro taste? No. And then you garnish with uh, your fresh parsley or cilantro. I think it was. I'm just going to garnish with parsley. Not a lot. Oh, let's see. What did I miss? Burl Ives. <laughs> Mr. Christmas. Is that enough stick for you guys? Anyone? That's fine. That's fine. We need to get a good good picture. That would have been uh that would be the deadliest catch, yeah. <laughs> oh really? Uh Uh, very nice gravy form. Oh, so Cub likes the cakes. Nice. I'm telling you, this stuff. I, I gotta, I gotta throw a shout out. Thank you, cousin Amber, for the uh, for this keto cake mix and the the icing. She gave it to me. Um, she's like, I saw these for you, and I know you're you're watching your sugar and stuff like that and you got a sweet tooth because hey we're cousins we <laughs> oh right so uh so she picked them up for me and uh i've got a i think a cookie brownie mix or something like that that's uh the keto duncan Hines one that she got me too she's like i don't know if you saw these and i was like no so she got them for me and i finally got around to making them and i i tell you what it's I think it's worth six bucks. Man, if, you, but, if you're heavy on keto, really paying attention to it, and you have a sweet tooth, that is that's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it is incredible. That stuff was really good. I, I like it a lot. I uh, after so I I got to throw this out there because I already spilled the beans. So after after we pulled, the, you have to watch the video. I will. After I dumped it out, I realized I probably didn't. It could have went longer. Because the center, the way the pan sits, it's kind of concave. Right. So it could have went a little longer. And I didn't. I should have just threw it back on, whatever. But anyway, um, the wife's like, well, you can't. It's not going to ice, yada, yada, yada. So I went to the store. So I had to get carrots and celery for, the, for this morning. And... I looked at a cake mix and it was six bucks. I was like, holy cow, there's no way. No way. Because I was going to make another cake and try <laughs> to do it right. But Mama come up with this idea and we did get a zero sugar icing just in case we didn't have enough of the keto icing left. But we had we had enough. So did this icing come in like a regular kind of icing yep. jar? Of everything else? Yep. Yep. I would show you the jar, but it's already been through the trash. Okay. But what Tamara used to do. Hey, come. Do it over here where the light's at so you get better lighting. She would stick the, the plastic tub in the microwave for a minute, got it all melted, and then took the toothpick with the pops uh, the pops on them, and just dumped them, them in, and then set them on the wax paper. We put it in a bowl because we added some um, coconut oil right. just to thin it out some. But... Uh, Yeah, but thank you very much, man. Those are delicious. Well, happy birthday, bro. Thank you. 
uh, used to use it to make pumpkin pumpkin cake. I did see that you made the video. I haven't watched it yet. So Mike and made keto Mike made a, a pumpkin cake, a keto pumpkin cake. Oh, okay. Okay, well, Rusty, I'll let you get up here and try it out. Oh, okay. I added you and Cub. You and Cub get to try it out. You get to try it by and be honest, because your four thousand fans want to see. I look. I I want you to realize the difference of yours and Dad's. I added you a little bit of spicy. He got Dad's. parsley instead of cilantro. Oh, you both got parsley. Okay. Oh, I, I can eat parsley. Like well, whatever lettuce, that is. But it's yeah. cilantro that I can't eat. Is that parsley? Then yeah, you, that's parsley. I didn't know which one that was, so I gave you a little bit of it. I didn't know which one that was. Okay. Let's see if this is birthright stew. Since you don't know what it is, I'll push it to the side. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's parsley. Guys, did they didn't have right. fresh cilantro. All right. <laughs> be honest. You can you can be honest. It's fine. Honest. It's, got a, it's got a good flavor. It's got a, a good texture. No, why? It's cut your heat off. I think it's really good. You no, know, like you said earlier, there's something missing. Yeah. It's it's almost. I ain't gonna say tastes like water, but it's. Something it's like plain. There's there's just something missing. It's, That's it's it. real earthy. But not bad at all. Now that I mean a lentil. Now I can say I've had a lentil. Yep. And it's now, something I would definitely eat again. But do do you think it would need some Uncle Steve smoke bomb? That it couldn't hurt it. Well, if you want to try, try it. because. Uncle Steve's. You know what? The saltiness might be what it's missing. They're spicier. That's my favorite one. That you okay. Got. Okay. There's cow shake and smoke bomb. I used my competition chicken or yard bird, whatever, last night on dinner. Okay. So Uncle Steve's wasn't around back then because I know he's not that old. But a little bit of Uncle Steve spicier. Chili powder. You know, um, it did. There was the, the other recipe that I was looking at was um, it did say to use red pepper flake. So maybe that's what it was. That is definitely helping. Um, it needs more. I'm not going to use more because I don't want to waste all the oil oh, on this it's one, bowl of, on one bowl. But I think it's just. That's the salt factor. I think it's just missing salt. The salt? I had mom try it. Yeah, she's not a fan of it. Oh, she she looked at me and goes, I was like, here you go, beautiful lady. Here you go. Just, <laughs> I don't know if I'm with that. I was like, oh no, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she thinks it's disgusting. That's but that, honestly, I mean that really helps. Yeah. Why? It's just And for me, I don't even like half the stuff in this. Mom, you want to give your opinions on it? You don't like it. No. What does you like about it, Mom? It's actually got cilantro in it, and I don't taste the cilantro. That's probably the only part I can like about it. <laughs> I, I don't like it. It just. So you wouldn't sell off your birthright for this? No. <laughs> Now there was there there has been other you, other recipes you, where they add. Really like there you go. Like a pan. I don't want to use cow So there's uh, disgusting. Yeah. So there's other recipes where they they add like ground lamb or something like that. But right, some it, type of protein would definitely be good in this. Yep. Yeah, but at the time, you know, he probably didn't have any. Right. And he would have used like wild game. If you had any, like deer or... Tanya. 
your idea about turning that into cake pops, perfect idea. These things taste amazing. Good. Good. I would. Are you sure you don't want more, Mom? No. Well, I'm going to do it in it. Oh, I didn't know I did Oh, yeah. I'm going to, because so. I have um, cheese and rotel in the crock pot. I have to add meat. Dad, I so love you. So you really you. like it? I do. Hell yeah. Dad, I love you, okay? I really do. But this was the disgustingest thing I've ever had. Mm. Oh. It is so bad. I thought it was really earthy. I thought it was pretty good. You know, grab some, you know, sausage or I got some broth we can slice up. But trying to stay traditional. Uh, I really like it. That's good. So the Uncle Steve's uh, spice here. I will take that with me to a uh, group tonight and uh, yeah, throw in a ham hock. That was some of the, some of the other stuff that I saw, but trying to keep it, uh, okay. trying to keep Where it. Do you make a lot of good things. Well, honey, it come, it come like from, from the book Genesis. I, well, I know that. I, and I, it was, I, there's no recipe for it. It's just to remember it's, it's like Tom just said. The soup is two thousand years old. Well, I know their that. tastes were I'm different. Just saying. Well, if you have any of this stuff left after group and y'all don't want to eat it, don't throw it away. I will bring it home. Well, heck yeah! <laughs> you can come to group with us if you want. I've actually already sent Teresa a message. Okay. Yeah, Uncle Steve's was around, but in biblical times. And Joe. <laughs> he was. They were importing. So it, it didn't make it to the peasants. It made it, it, it was still up in the castle where uh, Herod was at. So, all right. Well, we're going to get out of here. And uh, this was a lot of fun. And so everybody have a great week. Do your thoughts and prayers for everybody. And yeah. Happy birthday, Rusty. Thanks a lot, sir. Ooh. Appreciate it. And uh, Cubs got some uh, queso dip she's making for, well, I'd say for the ball game this afternoon, but it's mainly for her. It is. But uh, I can sit down with that whole thing, and I don't even care. So, I love queso. And we learned we learned a few things. Uncle Steve's was around in biblical times. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Cubs, let's send us out of here, baby. All right, this two wheels and cooking. Did you have fun? Did it taste good? Rock on. You guys are awesome. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next week. Rock on, y'all. Have a great week, guys. Have a great week.